I mean, what was so interesting about this conference, which I've never seen in previous years, was the first day was dedicated to institutional investors, of which the majority do not own any crypto, and yet they pack the room. And so what they're interested in, and certainly I as an investor am interested in, is what are the policy metrics? And there's five in the market right now. Um, Yellen just spoke minutes right. ago. You could call her the sixth if you want, but she's more of the same in terms of the POTUS executive order. So here they are in, in order of, of almost how they were brought to market. Number one, Senator Lemus. She has is crafting this massive bill. It's over 600 pages. It's huge. It'll probably be chopped into multiple pieces, but she's inviting everybody to the Hill that's interested, and she's asking for input from the private sector, including investors like me. We're all going there because we want our say, and as a result, um, it's a bipartisan effort. You don't see anything in Washington. So her policy embraces policy on Bitcoin, stable coins, but not yet on NFTs. So that's what you know about that vector. Okay. So that's not going to address NFTs. Then there's POTUS's executive order. That's number two. The good news there is he's not outlawing cryptocurrencies. He's embracing it for the productivity enhancement, but he's telling you he's going to regulate it and you'll have more coming out to you. You've heard it through, through Yellen in six months. Right. But buried in that order is a concern about climate change. And that is a direct swipe at the Bitcoin mining industry right now, which is coming under scrutiny for ESG. You know that. Yes, we've discussed that at length. Yeah. Yes. So that's number two. So you're starting to see a theme emerging around ESG because when you examine the BlackRock letter, if you want to call that the order, the demand about climate change and carbon, Larry Fink is doing the same thing. He's, he's, he's looking at, at carbon credits and he's, he's calling them out as being not a true way to get carbon neutral. But now it gets worse because another vector that just hit the market in the last 14 days was the SEC memo about requiring carbon audits for every public company. Now that is scary. Well, that, that opens up a whole other conversation into the carbon credit market, voluntary carbon credits, offset carbon credits. Before we, we dig into that, um, I want you to continue going through those okay, so uh, I just, vectors I gave of regulation. You four. The fifth is just 48 hours old. It's the bill. It's, it's the bill that's coming from Haggard. Right. Stable coin focus bill. I have this bill. I want to show it to you. One page, two pages. I have never seen a bill from a senator that's two pages. And the reason I think he did this is so that every senator will read this right. bill. Usually reams and reams of paper. Nobody even looks at them. I read it. It's genius. And all it says is let's deal with one important vertical of crypto stable coins. Mm -hmm. Let's regulate them in a very simple manner. Let's disclose what's inside them, what backs up the value of them. Let's audit them every month and let's not let them own any asset with a duration of more than 12 months. This bill on its own, 3970, could revolutionize a multi-billion dollar industry in the stroke of a pen. So this is, if this is the kind of policy that interests me. I spoke with the senator. The idea is to make this an easy decision. I hope he can drive this home because right now we're in limbo on stable coins. Now, stable coins are contemplated in the Lummis bill too, but it's part of a very much larger act. This is a single act. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's look at the Lummis bill first. Um, what are your objections there? Is there anything there that jumps out at you as being problematic? Because he says it does, it does have bipartisan support, which is a very rare thing in Washington these days. Does it have O'Leary support? What in that bill do you not like? I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion, particularly after the feedback uh, from the institutions here at the conference, we'll take any regulation. Give us anything. I mean, we're going to make the assumption because it's bipartisan and they've taken so much input from the industry that we'll get something that's workable. It may not be perfect, but the reason you care as an investor, the reason you would want Lummis to be successful or Haggerty, is that the institutional capital is like a giant dam of a wall of money that can't invest yet. So it's a spigot of, of capital in the trillions of dollars. 
Not a dime of it has been put into crypto yet. Can you imagine what would happen to asset values if they start to allocate? That's well, the investment There thesis. has been some institutional invest interest. Practically zero. According to Jason Urban from Galaxy Digital, he says yeah. we're in the second inning of institutional interest. I share his optimism, but I would call it, we're not even in the game yet. Wow. When you, when you talk to sovereign wealth and large pension, nothing. Okay, so you're saying he's talking. From look, there's small, there's small. Um, primarily, it's it's private wealth, you know, family wealth. It's hedge funds. It's certain smaller institutions that are that used to buy the the uh, publicly trading shares of Bitcoin miners, but now they're worried about the carbon audit issue. I, I I don't see it yet. What we really need is the SEC and the U.S. regulator to make policy. And then the allocations will start, primarily in Bitcoin, probably 50 basis points. So what would be that watershed moment? What needs to happen for all of these institutions that you say are just waiting for clarity, for them to get that clarity? The easiest way to do it would be to do what the Canadians did and simply allow the first American traded Bitcoin ETF, which could be purchased as a security into mandates that are already set up to purchase securities, like shares. Because they don't have to buy Bitcoin, they don't have to set up a separate wallet, they can simply say, okay, here is a true ETF with the underlying actual Bitcoin, right? and we can simply allocate 50 basis points to a $100 billion mandate. We can buy the ETF. That would be the easiest path to take. My guess is they're not going to allow that. There's, there's multiple applications for that ETF, just of had, which none have been granted. Just had Kathy Woods uh, one rejected very recently. Exactly. And so it, it doesn't matter which one gets it's actually licensed because there'll be 10 more that will come immediately. But we're going to need an order from the regulator to allow institutions to be compliant when they buy Bitcoin itself. And you think the first step towards that order would be the approval by the SEC of a spot ETF? Yes. That and would, that gets the spigot open? It, it starts the spigot open. If that happened, it would be like what happened in Canada. Um, to me, Canada is like a, a regulatory fishbowl. You test stuff there. <laughs> And, and it's working. Nobody's been harmed by that ETF. And now they've got an ETF with Ethereum in it. And institutional clients in Canada and individual investors can put it into their portfolios. Right. And so, and they are doing that. Billions of dollars worth of it has been allocated. But we, we need it to come from the regulator in the US because so much of the regulation around the world in other jurisdictions is based on SEC. And so I, I like what Haggerty is doing by saying, let's not try and solve all the world's problems. Let's just pick one asset in crypto. The easiest would be stable coins. That may be the first to move. That would signal, and certainly the fact that this bill is out there would signal that there's an interest. And Toomey was on the air today saying the same thing. It's a good asset. The great thing about getting stable coin nailed down on a regulatory basis in the US is that it creates a global currency backed by the US dollar. It keeps the US dollar as the currency of reference globally. And I don't know why regulators and lawmakers in the US wouldn't want that. They can do it with the sign of a pen and everybody would get behind USDC or some other stable coin or maybe multiple stable coins, but they're all backed by the US dollar. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.